So today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going back. I want you to get into your time machines and get ready to go back with me to an old result that I found on Twitter. Actually, I got requested to do this by Jacob H. Holiday. Jacob J. Holiday? Jacob J. Holiday. Um, this ant result made by Specular. Um, basically, it's a bunch of ants or cockroaches or something, and they uh, get distributed on the surface. Notice that they can actually climb up surfaces. That's going to be one thing we're doing and they avoid some kind of object. So that is what we are going to be making today. I made a bit of a demo uh, just to show you that it's possible with not that many nodes. Let me actually just modify some of these numbers and you will see uh, I made like little spheres instead of ants, but you can see they avoid this empty, so which you can put anywhere and they like stay constrained to the edges of the uh, mesh. Um, so they avoid the thing and they can crawl up surfaces uh, just like speculars could. So uh, if this is interesting to you, uh, check out this tutorial. Uh, Jacob said that he would make a um, extension of this tutorial maybe. I don't know. I'm not going to hold him to it. Anyways, let's uh, make this result. So first things first, we need to make like this floor with a surface. So uh, to do that, I'm going to add in a plane, make it larger in edit mode, and add in a monkey. All part of the same mesh, so I'm, all do I'm doing this all in edit mode. And this is what we're going to apply geometry nodes to. So, uh, with this mesh, go into geometry nodes, click this, and uh, to have a bunch of points going around the thing... Oh, by the way, I should just mention I'm using um, 3.5, and that's important because we're using simulation nodes for these. That being said, um, we need a bunch of points distributed on the thing, and they're moving around. First step of that is distributing a bunch of points. So let's take this step by step by step. Distribute points on faces. There we go. <laughs> Done. Uh, next order of business is we need them to move in a correct kind of way. So now I'm going to use the simulation nodes. And we're going to say for each frame, kind of move in a random direction, but stay constrained to the surface is what we're going to do. So I'm feeding in a bunch of points into simulation nodes. And what I'm going to do, and let me add in this timeline so you can see when I'm playing this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for each frame, because again, um, simulation nodes updates per frame. It's not like a serial loop or anything like this. Per frame, why don't you get offsetted by a random vector that I'm going to use a noise texture for. And remember, every time we use noise texture, we need to center this. So I'm going to subtract by 0.5. Uh, what do you expect to happen? Play. Okay, we get a bunch of buzzing. It's uh, not smooth motion and it's not constrained to the surface. So first of all, let's make it smooth motion. I'm going to scale this down so it's not as intense. I'm going to make it go a tenth as much. So every frame it's going a random number, random vector, uh, a tenth as much. You can see now it's a bit smoother, but it's still kind of like weird and some pieces are moving, some are not. This is because the noise texture is using position and there's these sinks if you've ever taken differential geometry. No, differential equations. There's these sinks where there's no motion because those are areas where the noise is equal to zero. Long story short, use indexing instead and this will get everything to move, okay? And uh, right now each one has a vector and it's kind of going to travel along this vector forever because this uh, randomness isn't updating per frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to update our randomness over time and make that time. If we play this now, it's going to be chaotic again. I'm going to divide this by like 100. And that might not even be enough. We might need to even... Oh, wait. Hold up. I meant to put this on the four-dimensional slider. There we go. This will animate our noise over time. Sorry for that mistake. Um, now, uh, we have these like ants kind of randomly moving around, but they're not constrained to the surface. And we can see that if we take our simulation node output and we join it with the original, you're going to see they're kind of floating all about, which is fine for fireflies, but I want want them constrained to the surface. So, what I can do is I can now set position again. So first we move them in a random direction. Then I'm going to say make their position relative to geometry proximity. This tells us what the closest point is. So if I use the original mesh, it's going to tell us what is the closest point for each of these ants uh, to the surface. 
So if I use this as the position, now you can see they are constrained and it looks like they're actually crawling on our surface. Again, what's happening is they're going all over the place, but then they're being remapped uh, to being on the surface. So this is part one. Part two is how do we get, and this is a one part tutorial. Uh, part two is how do we get them to move away from an object, okay? Uh, which, as you can guess, is going to be another set position node. So let's actually add that in. Uh, to do this, what we need to do is we need to add in an empty. This empty is going to be what they're trying to avoid. So it's almost like we want the opposite of geometry proximity. It's like look for where the empty is and then move away from it, not towards it. Um, I'm going to bring this in using an object info. So I brought in the empty and we're going to somehow use the set position to say move away. Well, if we look at one of these points like this one, we know that relative to the empty, we want it to go this direction. How do we get that vector? Well, we know the position is this vector. We know the position of the empty is this vector. And if we subtract them, and it might be a little hard to tell, uh, it creates this vector that goes this way. Long story short, if we subtract their positions, it's going to give us this move away vector. So what does that mean? That means we can use vector math and our position. And we say take the position and subtract away the location of the empty. And that is going to give us the vector that moves this away. Now, when I do this, I'm going to first of all, and we're going to do more to this, but I'm going to scale it. So it's not as intense by 0.1. What do you expect to happen? So they're going to move in random directions and away from this and be constrained to the surface. Well, you can see it's kind of doing the right thing, but it kind of has an infinite radius. They're like trying to get away and they're going to the corners of the mesh to do that. They're hiding. Uh, I want to constrain how much this can happen and also slow this down. To do this, what I can do is I can say, let's make a distance function between the same two vectors. So instead of subtracting them, I'm saying, what are the distance between these? And I'm going to say, for how strong to make this effect, we're going to use the distance and say from 0 to 1. So if it's at a distance of 0, meaning it's exactly on the empty, it should be moving away, let's say at point 1. If it's beyond 1 away, so it's at least one unit away, it's with the, outside this unit circle, uh, don't move away, right? So I'm kind of doing a reversal and a scaling down by 10, and I'm going to connect this to our scale. And now you can see uh, everything's kind of moving just like it was before, but the local radius of uh, 1, and we can change that, is affecting these, and that can be updated over time, and you can animate this or play with it in real time. To make this a bit better, I'm going to say let's have it be a radius of 2, so it's a bit clearer that they're trying to move away. And uh, a little bonus is we can set this to smoother step to have a nice like smoother distribution or the smoother transition. So here I'm constraining them to the side. Over time, if I constrain them to the side, they'll come back out uh, on the plane over time. And you can see, again, it works with the objects that are going up a surface. So really at this point, all you have to do, and you can modify the settings, but all you have to do is make these into ants. And that part I'm going to leave to Jacob, because this is just the logic part of it, which is what I'm interested in. But uh, what you could do is you could instance on points. I'm going to use a sphere, uh, but for you, you want to model a ant that's animated. So imagine each one of these spheres is an ant, and now let me make sure there. this is on the surface. And now these ants are moving away from our thing. So uh, that is the essence of it. I'm going to make this a blend file, just the logic part of it, um, available on Patreon. So use that link in the description if you want to just download this and play around with it yourself. Uh, credit to Specular for making this result. And that is it. Hopefully that satisfied you, Jacob. Bye.